uh, I will present you some uh, different topic is the potential of resource recovery from wastewater in the Republic of Serbia. As you know, within this project, we are trying to uh, get to know the transfer of knowledge and technologies and the opportunities. So we are trying within the project to, uh, let's see, estimate uh, how this uh, will affect us and what are our uh, possibilities regarding resource recovery from wastewater. So just to check uh, the some of the uh, lines mentioning in previous two days. So we are now still, for me, living in a traditional linear economy world, which is based on the extraction of natural resources, production of a specific product, uh, use of that product and eventually disposal uh, when it becomes useful or it becomes a waste. And today we are facing the scarcity of various resources uh, and the scarcity is becoming more and more obvious. And over the time, the, uh, linear, uh, the concept of circular economy has developed and it represents a new renewable uh, industrial economy. So if we uh, observe wastewater as a kind of resource, so the circular economy within this sector is also becoming uh, more and more uh, important every day. Uh, so Natasha mentioned yesterday that uh, circular economy and resource recovery from wastewater is not something so new. Uh, traditional, traditional irrigation with uh, nutrient-rich wastewater and utilization of sludge has been uh, done year, hundreds of years ago. Of course, they didn't. Uh, uh, they, they wasn't aware uh, with the risks that uh, we are uh, aware, very aware now. And uh, also, uh, I we can say that uh, some example of circular economy in this sector is also the production of energy through biogas uh, production. So generally. Uh, Worldwide, wise speaking, the wastewater treatment sector is currently experiencing evolution from a system that was only designed to remove certain pollutants uh, to a specific limit value to a system that is also uh, has to be able to recover value added products and re reintroduce them into the value chain. Uh, so this circular economy approach uh, should transform the traditional wastewater treatment plants into biofactory system that uh, will be uh, uh, enabled to recover materials and energy from wastewater even more uh, than uh, this traditional approach so far. So what is happening here in Serbia with the, the start of Im implementation of uh, Smart Water Twin project, uh, some uh, things starting to cha change on national level. Uh, here we are still at the beginning, which we'll I emphasize later. We still don't have uh, resolved the entire wastewater treatment system. We are now on 10% uh, of resolving it. Uh, our uh, decision maker wrote circular economy development program uh, only for two years and, and they are uh, updating it every two years and they said that in the current state that it is not possible to achieve circularity in the use of water to a significant extent. Why is that? Because of those small number of wastewater treatment plants that are operating and that are operating efficiently. We had like uh, built uh, 45 uh, of them and uh, throughout the years some of them stopped working because of the neglection and some of them are not designed in the beginning on a satisfactory level. So let's say that we are now on a 35 of them and to solve the entire wastewater treatment system we need over 350 uh, wastewater treatment plants in Serbia. Uh, for me, what is uh, significant and didn't hasn't been mentioned in circular economy development program is that the first step is the uh, in the implementation in circular economy 
is to methodologically plan it and design the phase of rehabilitation of existing and construction of new facilities. That is what we are trying to estimate uh, throughout uh, this project. Uh, so I will be focusing here on two major uh, lines. Uh, uh, regarding resource recovery from wastewater, first will be sludge because again on a national level it is recognized first uh, and uh, of course then we will have some talk about uh, reclaimed water itself. So regarding the sludge, uh, we are now facing uh, the predictions that uh, with the implementation of several projects uh, that are concerned with uh, building wastewater treatment plants, uh, we will going to have an uh, increased number of sludge generated. For now, it's like uh, 15,000 tons per year. And uh, when the whole system is being built, it will increase like 10 times the or 20 times, uh, for sure, like uh, over 130,000 tons uh, of dry mass of sludge per year. So for me, what is still uh, not good enough is how we perceive sludge. In Serbia, the uh, sludge is still considered, the uh, sludge sludge is still considered a waste, uh, according to the law on waste management, and is defined as any sludge created in the municipal and industrial wastewater treatment plant. It has its own index number in waste catalog, and all the analysis of sludge uh, for now that are uh, has to be performed by the operators uh, are in accordance with the uh, perception that the sludge is uh, waste. So the uh, valuable nutrients are never being uh, examined uh, in these uh, obligatory analysis, and that is something that has to be. Uh, change in the future. Uh, so even if uh, authorities perceive it uh, as a waste, they are not even consistent with that because if you see perceive something as waste, then you handle it according to the waste hierarchy. And uh, in Serbia, a majority of sludge is being landfilled, uh, which is the last uh, option uh, in the waste uh, management pyramid. So that is something that we, sh we should be doing last uh, in the, uh, what we should be focusing on is uh, recycling a valuable fraction of uh, uh, sludge and uh, extracting uh, energy from it. So in addition, with adopting the green transition and transition to a circular economy, uh, we have some uh, new set of goals in this area. Uh, within a new uh, law on waste uh, management, uh, sludge is uh, first, uh, for the first time defined as a separate uh, line of uh, waste, and it should be handled according to a special program. So last year we adopted the sludge management program in the Republic of Serbia for a period of almost 10 years, but it has a lot of uh, drawbacks that we are trying to uh, solve out uh, uh, now. So uh, I will uh, look back uh, on the European Union practices. Uh, what are the main uh, management practices there? So according to the data, about 10.4 million tons of uh, dry solid matter of sludge is being produced annually in the European Union. Uh, it's almost uh, 17 kilograms per inhabitant per, per year, and sludge is uh, most of disposed in different way. Uh, 94 uh, of uh, generated sludge is uh, managed in some way. Of course, uh, majority of population in uh, Europe is covered with the sewage system, so the large amounts of sludge needs to be uh, managed. And Germany and Poland are defined as the country countries that have produced and disposed the largest uh, amounts of sludge. Uh, so here you have uh, the different management options and uh, uh, nationalities and states that are uh, being uh, uh, 
operating under those management practices. So use in agriculture is dominant in Bulgaria, Croatia, Czech Republic, Denmark, Ireland, Norway, Spain and Sweden. We have composting and other uses predominant in Cyprus, Estonia, France, Hungary, Luxembourg and Slovakia. Incineration is starting to, being, uh, to be more uh, popular because of a large amount of sludge. Uh, and uh, it's predominant in Germany, Austria, Belgium, etc. And disposal on in landfills is still uh, used in Malta and Romania, but it's starting to be uh, forbidden to light fill of valuable organic matter. So these states are finding new approaches to how to manage uh, uh, with uh, their sludge. And other uh, uses are still in an increased number, and not uh, full data what this means and how these countries um, in other way uh, manage their sludge. So uh, we analyzed a little bit our neighborhood countries, what they are doing uh, with the sludge. Uh, most of them are used it in the agriculture, such as Bulgaria, and Romania, but also in a large extent uh, in Romania and Croatia, it's being uh, the sludge is being landfilled. So, what are the main problems uh, for these countries? Uh, it's um, the uh, how the people, uh, how farmers feel to use uh, uh, sludge in the agriculture. Uh, are the risks uh, very well assessed? Uh, what about the micropollutants? Uh, how about uh, making stricter limits for industry and who is monitoring the industry discharge? Uh, these are the questions that needs to be uh, addressed uh, in the future. Uh, so they would have more uh, confident in using uh, it in the agriculture. In Bulgaria, the use in agriculture is problematic uh, also because of the seasonality of the sludge production and ability to be uh, spread on a farmland. Uh, Croatia also has a, a big problem with um, different spatial variability in the coastline and uh, in the upper part of the country, maybe one fifth on, of the total produced sludge can be can be used in the agriculture. Uh, Slovenia is a small country. Most of the sludge comes from Ljubljana wastewater treatment plants and they're uh, doing the production of uh, briquettes, uh, but now they're also facing some micropollutants in it and Hungary we are well, well aware of uh, their um, management practices. They're being importing uh, other countries' sludge because they, they were using a lot of it uh, uh, for recultivation. So they used all their sludge for it and even, uh, of course, for uh, a certain amount of money imported and sold uh, other countries' sludge. But it is forbidden uh, like two years ago and they are now still facing uh, uh, different problems and options, how they are going to manage it in the future. Of course, they are using it uh, in agriculture, but mostly for uh, recultivation, as I uh, mentioned. Uh, several of these countries, like, like Hungary and Bulgaria, are thinking about incineration of the sludge, but none of the countries uh, has the infrastructure for it, and the incineration is still being considered the most um, uh, expensive option on sludge management. And so what is important also uh, recovery of nutrients from sludge uh, is the nutrient recovery technology, of course. Uh, we have several options how to uh, extract or use the nutrients present in the sludge. Uh, it is direct use of sludge in the agriculture, agriculture and that is the something that is most uh, easily approachable and most economically feasible uh, we can recover dissolved phosphorus and nitrogen from the liquid phase uh, in the wastewater treatment plant and we can do recovery of phosphorus from sludge ash 
So this is uh, a picture, general picture of one wastewater treatment plant with the places where we can draw uh, the nutrients. So we can do it from the water line, uh, extract the phosphorus and nitrogen through adsorption and ion exchange. But uh, regarding the efficiency, these technologies are mostly used in industrial wastewater with um, higher concentration of nutrients present. Uh, some of the two main approaches, the direct application to land, which enables us to also use some micronutrients present. We can uh, recover 95% of phosphorus, but only 10% of nitrogen. A lot of nitrogen is lost throughout nitrification and the nitrification processes and goes out in the atmosphere. And the extraction from the sludge ash, if we do, the incineration is also very high, but it is questionable uh, that the phosphorus, phosphorus uh, is not so readily available for the plants if you use the ash in the agriculture and also the technologies to recover phosphorus from phosphorus ash are still emerging and uh, still being um, tested. Another approach is to use the uh, supernatant uh, remained after sludge dewatering. Uh, you can achieve uh, satisfying uh, percentages of phosphorus and nitrogen recovery in this way. And you can also uh, perform a direct extraction from, from uh, the sludge itself and uh, reach almost the same percentages as well as from the sludge uh, liquor. So, Again, what about Serbia and our sludge management program? Uh, for me, it's written without the assessment of input data, so you can draw certain conclusions. So it leaves a very wide space open. Something that you can see reading the program is that they are also uh, suggesting mono incineration just to make the some sort of urban mineries or phosphorus deposits for later when technologies are being developed enough to start the extraction of phosphorus from the sludge ash regarding uh, application of sludge in the agriculture it is uh, forced but we don't have the uh, basic data about the quality of sludge that is being generated we don't know what is going to be uh, the case with the sludge that is going to be generated on the new plants and uh, one most important thing we don't have enough data about the soil quality where we would uh, apply the sludge so we wouldn't know uh, maybe uh, some certain concentration are there being naturally present in uh, in that soil or it is added throughout sludge application so that is something that has to be uh, performed uh, regarding research uh, in the future. So as I said, we have only 90% operating uh, wastewater treatment plants from what we need. And according to a specific plan for the implementation of urban wastewater directive, uh, we need like 359 wastewater treatment plants. Uh, we did the assessment based of the, on what uh, the program uh, suggested us, what is going to be built. So these are the national plans. We will have small waste, wastewater treatment plants uh, between 2,000 and 10,000 person equivalents. Those uh, plants uh, in number will be 274 medium-sized plants uh, will be uh, 74. Uh, greater ones 11 and the biggest plant is of course for the capital of Belgrade it will be um, the equivalent of uh, 1 million 1 million and a half person equivalent so we also throughout this plan have the suggested technologies uh, for the smaller and most numbered one it is a sequential batch reactor with uh, anaerobic digestions or with uh, uh, aerobic stabilization of sludge we, for medium sized plants and plants above capacity of 100,000 uh, person equivalents. We have some differences regarding the capacity. If it is enough, then the anaerobic uh, uh, treatment will take place for with the recovery of energy also. And of course, the major one also will be a modern 
technically modern solution with anaerobic digestion. So when you perceive most uh, of the person or most of the inhabitants will be covered with some sort of anaerobic digestions. And regarding uh, the additional sludge treatment, this is what is the most proposed of is the uh, humification in uh, reed fields uh, or storage for service devotering uh, and humification means 10 years of uh, treating the sludge before you can use it and later application to land or transport to a sludge management center. And when you go up to bigger plants, uh, they are proposing uh, incineration and disposing in mono land fields to create, as I said, some sort of urban uh, mines for later. So uh, what one thing that program emphasizes is the somewhat a general goal to establish a safe, sustainable and cost effective sludge management system from wastewater treatment plants in accordance with the principles of circular economy. But later document does not recognize the content of useful components and does not uh, create any sort of uh, evaluation and information that will be in line with circular economy principles. So we tried to perform with the assessment something like that to make a material balance for most use technologies that are given in this plan. And these are the example for those 274 throughout uh, throughout the uh, sequencing batch uh, reactor, where we can see that we will have a certain amount of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus later in the stabilized and uh, drained sludge, and also is in sludge liquor. And other technologies for medium sized plants and large one also will give significant amounts when you multiply it with number of person equivalent also in sludge liquor and stabilized sludge. So what can we say? Uh, the amount of nutrients uh, will be will be dependable on the method of stabilization of sludge but is not uh, so different between aerobic and anaerobic treatment. Uh, according to the plan, the largest number of person equivalents will be covered. As I said, with anaerobic treatment, uh, stabilized, sl stabilized sludge uh, contains approximately between one and 6% of nitrogen and phosphorus. We later use the Mindiana value for our predictions. And of course, the percentage of phosphorus can be further increased uh, with the inclusion of chemical uh, precipitation within the uh, sludge uh, treatment. And of course, the uh, location where you start resource recovery can be uh, numerous. So what can we do with the estimation? One thing that, that uh, we are lacking is the exact number of uh, let's say, uh, all the plan for each uh, wastewater treatment plan. We don't have it, not even within the program, because uh, this uh, uh, building on wastewater treatment uh, is happening throughout at least three different uh, separate national programs that, that uh, they don't communicate with each other and the data are not so open. So any, uh, they just uh, gave us the uh, region and administrative, uh, administrative district uh, capacity for each. Uh, so for each district, we have a, a person equivalent uh, adjusted and throughout that, uh, according to some sort of median value for starch production that uh, the program gave us, but also for uh, nutrients and phosphorus that we assessed, uh, can give us uh, the exact number. Uh, now you cannot see it, but it's uh, like uh, 400,000 uh, tons of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus each year, year uh, throughout uh, the use of sludge. So the estimated values uh, are important when we are considering what are the possibilities for us to apply the sludge in the agricultural purposes, because it's the most direct use of resources, the most basic one. Even if you perceive sludge uh, still as a waste, it's the first step, uh, first favorable step uh, you will be uh, performing uh, with the uh, uh, 
waste hierarchy uh, management and uh, of course you have to determine the need uh, of plant crops and nitrogen and phosphorus uh, so you can uh, assess uh, how much uh, of the sludge you are going to be able to use in the farmland and uh, this information of course is very important for wastewater treatment plant operator operators because they are becoming sludge owner and the burden of uh, sludge management is on them how they will going to uh, manage it uh, later and uh, what can uh, they do with it and they, if they can extract uh, some additional value when um, uh, trying to uh, distribute it later to farmers. Of course, this is a good approach uh, for them to watch uh, and monitor their uh, sewer system because the industry uh, tends to uh, discharge uh, different uh, sort of pollutions that will uh, for sure they degrade the quality of sludge that can be used in the agriculture. So the upstream control is very important if you are trying to force uh, this solution. So uh, beside the direct uh, sludge application, other uh, very well-known um, resource recovery is to try uh, to have implant uh, strobit crystallization. It is also a slow-releasing slow uh, fertilizer. And uh, regarding Serbia, uh, program says that you can use it on wastewater treatment plants, uh, capacity of 100,000 person equivalents and more, which uh, I would say is true because uh, regarding uh, literature data, uh, this is exactly the, um, the wastewater uh, treatment plant capacity where uh, uh, through it, crystallization becomes uh, uh, cost effective and cost effective maybe after 10 years of implementing it. So after the 10 years regarding the investment cost that you will need for building additional uh, reactor, it is uh, mostly upflow fluidized bed reactor for through it crystallization. And of course, you will have to have uh, chemicals uh, for uh, settling uh, the magnesium ammonium phosphate, so you, you will have to have the source of magnesium and uh, substances for the pH uh, increase. And just to make a quick observation on uh, two additional sludge treatments that also the program suggests that is the humification. Okay, you can use it, uh, but it lasts 10 years and you have trapped resources for 10 years be before you can use it further from the aspect of circular economy, this is not so uh, favorable and we should really question the cost benefit analysis uh, before adopting this solution. Uh, regarding the process of humification, you will have the deg uh, degraded organic mat matter. You need uh, several years for more complex one. You will probably lose uh, the nitrogen and you will have uh, phosphorus uh, stable because it, it keeps uh, being bound in the sludge uh, deposits. And for non-incineration, uh, okay, it's a great uh, way to reduce the sludge volume by most uh, more than 90%, but uh, we don't have uh, the infrastructure for it. The infrastructure is uh, very expensive. Uh, you have to uh, think uh, outside the wastewater treatment plant if you will have regional incineration plants. Also, what about the... Uh, discharge in the atmosphere and now they are thinking about um, uh, maybe uh, coal uh, combustion but then you cannot use the phosphorus it is uh, more and more difficult uh, in that way and if you use the mountain incineration then okay you uh, make the phosphorus deposit but how about the technology that now should be extracting phosphorus in that way it is possible to extract phosphoric acids through with calcium, but those technologies are still not uh, implemented on a large scale. So this is a little bit uh, tricky to say for now, yes, I'm going to invest in mono incineration infrastructure and you don't know the uh, end result and end calculation will be, uh, will this solution be cost effective at the end? And you will be giving a lot of money uh, to build uh, incineration facilities. Also uh, for the assessment of uh, 
circular economy introduction in wastewater uh, treatment plants, the life uh, cycle assessment and life cycle cost assessment is a very important tool. This is now that we are uh, been working uh, on uh, this uh, concrete case. It's the case of wastewater treatment plant in Subotica. They are now uh, dealing with uh, their sludge uh, with landfilling and just some small part with composting also at their local landfill. They are mixing the sludge in a smaller percent with other urban green waste and uh, then uh, make the briquettes and uh, perform the land application. So that is their current scenario that we want to uh, assess. Uh, the thing that they could do throughout the program and with the necessary analysis and risk assessment is direct farmland application with the transport. And again, they have the uh, scenario that the national authorities are in a way forcing them throughout this program, and that is uh, to mono incinerate uh, uh, their uh, sludge. And for them, that means that they will have to uh, add addition, additional uh, sludge drying step on their own expense, and of course, paying later from the, for the transport. And when we don't uh, know about later phosphorus extraction and fertilizer productions uh, procedure before uh, also the end uh, farmland application, but with a different sort of um, gain uh, fertilizer, indirectly gain fertilizers. So these three scenarios, I think, are a good example of what is the optimal case on a national level. And just briefly about the water, because uh, water is just beginning to be observed as a resource, so reclaimed water uh, as it is, uh, although it is a little bit um, uh, strange because uh, water is the main uh, resource present in the wastewater. Uh, so uh, it makes, of course, about 98% uh, of wastewater flow. And uh, according to the estimation of European Commission, wastewater treatment plants are now starting to be perceived as a good option for growing demand for water in the entire Europe. And we have uh, the countries listed with the largest amount of water can be potentially recovered for municipal wastewaters. Uh, and, of course, uh, the, this will uh, be uh, growing in the future. And uh, last June, the regulation of the European Parliament on minimum recover, uh, requirements for water use starting to being implemented and different countries are facing different uh, problems regarding this. Uh, this uh, is a good step uh, in implementing circular economy model uh, with uh, bro uh, bringing this regulation and by using it in agriculture, the reclaimed wastewater, uh, the uh, food production will be independent uh, of seasonal uh, draft and uh, a little bit safer to say. And of course, uh, the presence of nutrients in treated wastewater could also reduce the use of additional fertilizer. The treatment with land is something that is also historically uh, known approach for wastewater treatment. Of course, risk management is the essential component of water reuse uh, system, as well as uh, with, uh, dealing, uh, with dealing with the sludge. Uh, what about Serbia? On the other hand, again, uh, we have uh, we don't have the coherent uh, regulation uh, that specifies the use of treated wastewater for irrigation purposes. We have three different documents that are a little bit dealing uh, with this, uh, each uh, document in its own way. And for now, if someone uh, will be uh, if someone wants to use uh, reclaimed wastewater, he couldn't know which uh, regulations to follow and which regulation to address. So uh, regarding uh, this, our first step is to harmonize uh, these different regulations in one single act that could be adopted and regu regulated uh, later. So it enables us to use uh, treated wastewater. Uh, why we 
why Serbia didn't deal uh, a lot uh, with this topic, because uh, we think that we are not uh, water endangered, so to say. But when you look at the stats, we are uh, dependent of the incoming water, water. Most of the rivers here are transitional rivers. And if you uh, use some specific parameters, we can say that uh, uh, we are water poor areas, uh, if it uh, maybe not seem that in the first place, but uh, we are, uh, we need uh, uh, 2050 cubic meters per inhabitant to say that we are water safe, uh, we have only uh, 1500 cubic meters per inhabitant per year. And uh, what is the other problem that uh, Serbia is a very uh, is uneven uh, in a spatial sense. Uh, so uh, water regimes are different in different parts of the country. So you have really water dependent parts uh, in one side and maybe water sufficient on the other. But the problem is that the most of the cities and the most of the uh, agriculture and industry is in the water, more water scarce region in the Republic of Serbia. And when we perceive water exploitation index, we are on a good uh, path. So you can say that we have enough water, but it doesn't say anything about uh, water quality. And water quality is also questionable in Serbia of course, as a consequence that we don't have the wastewater treatment uh, plants in the enough uh, percent. Uh, most of good quality, good water quality resources are on the boundaries uh, of the country, but what is the exploited the most is uh, not uh, sufficient in its quality. So when you do a little bit of the estimation uh, throughout the wastewater, we can have more than uh, 1 million uh, cubic meters of purified wastewater per day to be available uh, for the country if we deal with this subject uh, in the future. Uh, of course, uh, when you are developing this kind of concept, uh, it is really a problem how we perceive wastewater treatment plants. Uh, uh, Conventional ones are built just to treat wastewater. They are mostly gravity located uh, uh, downhill. So if you want to reuse water, then you have to think that something that you grab it, uh, that was a free flow now has to be turned upwards and you will use a lot of energy for it. So the reusing of wastewater really uh, forces uh, that we start to think uh, differently. So just to one uh, one more time to mention the project that we are implementing uh, also these kinds of estimation in is how we can methodologically estimate uh, what are our possibilities, national possibilities to reuse uh, wastewater within circular economy concept throughout lessons learned our partners from Europe, they're rethinking uh, their position and we are <laughs> having some sort of a blank blank page uh, to start uh, we to start thinking and uh, adopt lessons learned. So thank you. I will ask one question. Yeah, and we can have the discussion later. Awesome as well. Now, uh...